Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Zosha Brom, who is a former editor and continuing member of the Freedom Press and Publishing Collective in the UK. Freedom Press is the oldest surviving anarchist press in the UK and bookshop. Um, Zosha is also a former organiser of London Anarchist Book Fair. So thanks so much for joining us today, Zosha. Um, First of all, I just wanted to ask you a really simple question. When did you first identify as an anarchist and and why? Um, I mean, it depends how, how conscious, uh, I mean, basically it depends if you want me to, whether I identified as anarchist or uh, basically, I think it kind of runs in my family. Uh, okay. My parents were uh, on the unorthodox side of parenting or family models for that matter. Um, and while they wouldn't describe themselves as anarchists, they uh, uh, partook in, uh, um, in the um, uh, activism uh, in opposition to communism in uh, Poland in 1980s, uh, which obviously is, is something I don't really remember because I was born in 1992, but uh, uh, I think this gave me a very solid background of um, um, questioning authority. Okay. Um, it was also something my parents um, stressed quite a lot in our upbringing. Uh, um, and as of um, more uh, uh, aware um, aspect of this, I would say it happened when I was about 17, 18 year old. Um, at the beginning, I was a bit of an eco-warrior. I got involved in... Um, uh, one of the um, uh, ecological organizations in uh, in my uh, uh, hometown. Uh, this, however, very quickly um, was very dissatisfying uh, because of the quite uh, dirty links with the uh, more mainstream politics. Yeah, uh, this uh, place and kind kind of gradually, uh, especially once I went to university, uh, I kind of gradually ventured towards uh, more. Uh, Anar uh, purely anarchist uh, perspective okay sure sure well that's a great start that's a great start um uh okay so how would you personally define anarchism and what kind of anarchist are you and what kind of anarchist are you not huh. <laughs> i prepared a quote for you it's a quote from uh, one of my favorite favorite anarchists uh, Stuart christie okay uh, who once in an interview uh, said that, uh, uh, this, this is where the quote starts, uh, anarchists do not stand aside from popular struggle, nor do they attempt to dominate it. Uh, they seek to contribute to it practically uh, whatever they can, and also to assist with, uh, with, with, with it the highest possible levels, both of individual self-development and, and of group solidarity. And this is, um, I always consider this quote as uh, very, um, accurate uh, description of my uh, approach to, to anarchism uh, and sure. also the role of uh, uh, anarchism in, uh, in the wider left. Um, That's or correct. Active, uh, uh, for that matter, if you want, I can send you the link to this uh, entire interview. Yeah, that would be, that would be perfect. I'll, I'll, um, I'll link, link to that underneath this video, yeah? Yeah, but I generally, I really like uh, uh, this uh, Stuart Christie's approach to anarchism, which was uh, very open-minded and uh, not uh, um, basically Stuart Christie. I'd never met him in a, a, a personally, but uh, uh, from everything I, I wrote from uh, from him, uh, um, it, it's very striking uh, that he really liked people. Okay. Uh, and um, this is basically the type of anarchist I am. That's the great. One I, likes people and uh, assumes people um, are by nature good. Okay, I'm completely ignorant of this guy, so I will have to do some research. It sounds that sounds really interesting. Um, um, I, I, I read. Mean, Stuart, yeah, Stuart Christie is one of the the greats of UK anarchism. Okay, um, he died uh, not that long ago. Um, he's uh, more famous. Um, uh, um, Happenings in his life was uh, the time when he attempted to assassinate uh, Franco in Spain. Oh my God! Um, so he's uh, like he was. He's probably the most uh, one of the most uh, well-known anarchists in. Uh, okay. Uh, you should definitely look him up. Yes. <laughs> I will. Oh yeah, I will. I mean, it's only in the, the past 
the past couple of years that I've been learning about anarchism, really. Um, and, I, and I've come to it through social ecology, through Murray Bookchin. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I did read a book from, uh, was it PM Press or I can't remember recently, about Colin Ward. Mm-hmm. And and Colin Ward, the UK based anarchist, he he it strikes me that he had quite a similar attitude of being um and I know he was very involved with Freedom Bookshop and Press. He 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 struck me as having an attitude which was quite pragmatic. And um yes. would you would you say that's that's true? Or? Uh yes, I mean Colin, Colin Ward is one of uh, Freedom's greats. Uh yeah. and um uh, I prefer Stuart Christie, <laughs> uh, which sure. is probably something extremely controversial, and uh, I can almost hear uh, the anarchists from different factions. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. and is, uh, because of um, uh, Stuart Christie wasn't um, uh, particularly friendly with freedom. Um, oh, okay. Um, due to the many conflicts in the anarchist movement in general. Um, okay, uh, that's interesting, yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, I call in the word is uh, uh, one of his books, uh, Anarchy in Action, is uh, definitely one uh, on my probably top five of uh, anarchist right. books. Right, okay, uh, okay. It's a really practical yeah. approach to, to the subject. Great. I'll, ask, I'll, I'll probably ask you a bit more about that um, in, in, um, soon. Um, so, okay, Um how would you introduce anarchist ideas and practice to people who are afraid of the A word? Well, so first of no, all, I, um, I don't think if I can do this better than Donald Trump, <laughs> um, but uh, I think uh, uh, I would definitely start uh, with uh, the concept of mutual aid. Yeah. Uh, this obviously it's not only anarchist uh, uh, anarchist concept. Uh, the term was uh, uh, it's a it's the title of the book of uh, Peter Kropotkin, one of the founding uh, right. members yeah. of uh, Freedom Collective. But uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a basically basic human uh, cooperation uh, concept, which is also inherently anarchist. And uh, I basically I think this is the easy the easy one to uh, to explain to people yeah perhaps uh, is some worries about uh, anarchism which normally come mm. from uh, you know tabloid press and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, most anarchists spend much more time doing community gardening and, uh, and right, right. than uh, smashing punks yes sure sure yeah that's a great uh, pathway and yeah i agree with you mutual aid right it um, happened in uh, i don't know about uh, canada but it definitely happened in uk over covid with uh, yeah uh, yeah, there was a lot. Uh, eight groups, which uh, I think be. at some point they had um, estimated four million people in them. Really? Uh, yeah. It was probably one of the the most successful uh, uh, um, injections of anarchist uh, concepts to the general society in the UK. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know it was that many. Okay, uh, I'll I'll research that as well. Put some links under the video. Um, Okay, um, how long did you work with Freedom and can you give a kind of brief overview of your time with Freedom? So, um, I came to UK in 2004, uh, shortly after Poland joined the EU. This was uh, something, I would say, uh, quite common for uh, for Poles to just venture somewhere to Western Europe for the first time with an... uh, restrictions um, uh, around this time. And uh, I uh, spent a good few years um, enjoying uh, some joints of London, such as uh, rave parties and squatting and um, uh, and all this stuff. And um, I was involved in Freedom for the first time, I, uh, I think in 2006, 2007, um, as a volunteer in, a, in a, our shop. Um, and then I, I did this uh, on and off for, uh, I think, uh, two or three years. Uh, in the meantime, I uh, also lived in Greece for a few years. Um, and then uh, I came uh, came back uh, to Freedom in 2017. And I took over the, the role of uh, editor of uh, our news site. Right, and right, okay. And I, I consider myself as a regular collective member. 
So did you did you have any kind of formal editorial training or is it or are you just kind of self-taught? Um most of it was DIY, but also I uh, I I had a master's degree in journalism, yes. Oh okay. Uh, so it's uh, that, that it's helped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um uh but obviously I mean I finished university I think in 2006, 2007, um and I didn't really do anything um uh, like that for a number of years, I kind of followed the very traditional path of a migrant of uh, getting manual jobs in the uh, in UK. I was uh, pushed by courier for uh, quite a while okay. and uh, landscaper um, for many, many years. Wow. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Um, okay. Um, how immersed are you in the history of Freedom Press and Bookshop? And how important is that history to you? And could you share an event from that history that inspires you from before your time? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I I think uh, freedom's history is uh, very important for uh, most of the our collective members. Um, it's something we are immensely proud of. Um, sometimes it's something a bit overwhelming. Uh, we often get uh, criticized. Uh, coming from this angle of uh, us having a very long uh, history and being compared to uh, freedom, uh, freedom, gra freedom's grades. I was once described as uh, uh, what was it? Um, total disgrace to long and proud history of freedom press. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, after I uh, okay boomered someone on Twitter, uh, it was quite hilarious. Um, but yes, I I I I must confess I'm I'm very proud of this and uh, I'm uh, I'm really flattered but uh, I I I will have a tiny tiny part in this. Yeah, great. Um, right. There were um, many moments in freedom's past which I think sh uh, we should be proud of. Also, quite a few we probably shouldn't. Right. Um, but uh, my favorite one is. Uh, um, is the famous uh, um, uh, case of uh, freedom of uh, editors, I think, uh, three, four of them uh, uh, getting um, uh, raided and uh, arrested and subsequently put on a very high profile uh, trial in uh, in UK um, in 1940s um, when freedom yeah. uh, attracted the attention of MI5, uh, which is the UK Secret Service, uh, because yeah. of uh, extremely effective uh, propaganda campaign in the British Army. Um, okay. I think we probably, there weren't many times when we rattled the state so much. Uh, basically, uh, Freedom started to distribute uh, uh, our magazine, who uh, back then changed its name to War Commentary because there was a Second World War uh, uh, going on. Uh, they started to distribute it to, to soldiers together with uh, uh, pamphlets about mutinies in history. Uh, and it was extremely of, uh, uh, effective uh, and also wow. extremely offensive to the state. Um, eventually, it led to the raid on uh, Freedom's uh, promise, promises and a trial, which uh, ended up with uh, three of uh, our editors being sent down. Um, right. I think I can probably find you a link. We I remember publishing a text about it not uh, long ago. Yeah, I read. I did read something about it, um, but yeah, a, a link would be good as as well. Um, and and maybe you could also explain to the viewers who who might not be aware how how strong the ties were with Kropotkin uh, in the in the very early days. Um, Kropotkin was one of the founders of uh, of Freedom, uh, together with uh, some um, other uh, quite well known. Uh, uh, people such as uh, Charlotte Wilson, who just between me and you, she was kind of the uh, the driving force. Right. Yeah, right, I read that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. It was a bit like Kropotkin was a man with idea, I would say, and uh, Charlotte Wilson, uh, I think, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, was the person who ensured that uh, freedom survived sure. uh, for this uh, first uh, period of, uh, of its history. Okay, great, great. Okay. Um, so um, Fr Freedom Press has defined itself as, I believe, anarchist communist or at least anarchist socialist from the beginning. But these days, how far does Freedom platform any other anarchist threats such as so-called individualist anarchism or an anarcho-primitivism? Um, so 
I think we gave up on uh, freedom being strictly anarchist communist a while okay. ago. Okay. Uh, we have uh, organizations such as uh, Anarchist Federation doing excellent job with this. Okay. Um, Freedom's general approach is to uh, to be a, a platform and resource of the the anarchist movement, uh, uh, which is uh, we understand uh, uh, very wide. Uh, like we don't really maintain any specific political position, and uh, you don't have to. Um, uh, believe in any specific anarchist things to join our uh, our collective as long as you identify as anarchist. Of, of course, within reason. Like we will never take uh, you know the right wing libertarians or. Uh, ah, uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, we do our best to basically be a be a resource for her as wide uh, group of anarchists as uh, as possible. Uh, oh. This is also why we try not to get ourselves involved in uh, too much in, uh, you know, the grandeur of uh, theoretical conflict, essentially. Right. Sure. 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 That's that. That sounds good. Um, okay. Um, can you can you just taking a detour for for a minute? Can you describe how you came to be a co-organizer of London Anarchist Book Fair, and I don't know, just describe something about that experience and maybe how it relates to freedom um so um the london anarchist book fair uh is i, I believe the oldest anarchist book fair in um uh, in the world it started in 1980s and it ran until uh, 2017 when the old collective uh, um uh, decided to uh, to quit uh, and then there was a void for a, a couple of years, or maybe a bit longer than a couple of years, in fact. And uh, I, together with uh, several other uh, friends and comrades, we basically thought that uh, there is a gigantic uh, anarchist book fair shaped hall in uh, in London, and it has to be filled. Uh, and so we decided to step in and uh, basically try our luck. It's not an easy event to organize, definitely. Um, uh, the fact that uh, the first edition under uh, our organizing uh, happened in 20, uh, 2020, as in the, the first year of the pandemic didn't help at all. Uh, we had to face a lot of obstacles, starting from um, the fact that uh, pretty much uh, all the traditional anarchist uh, uh, fund, uh, fundraising uh, methods, such as uh, benefit kicks and this kind of stuff, uh, were basically not possible to organize. Um, yeah. We eventually ended up uh, organizing uh, just a virtual event of um, uh, two days of uh, uh, talks and workshops and one concert. Um, it was um, very popular, over 4,000 people attended it um, in total. Uh, and next year, we in 2021, we had a scaled down version of the uh, in-person uh, uh, anarchist book fair. Uh, in Conway Hall in uh, London, and this was followed by 2022 with a full scale, scale several venues uh, event we had uh, last uh, September. Uh, right. And by the way, we changed the name. It's called um, uh, Anarchist Book Fair in London now, not okay. uh, Anarchist Book Fair. Okay. Um, um, and to take you to the steps of organizing this event, I mean, to be honest, it's uh, awful amount of work. Yes. Uh, and it's not the most grateful of the works you can uh, you can have in the movement because uh, um, it involves um, navigating between uh, approximately a million different anarchist conflicts and desires uh, yeah, and, uh, right. trying to survive it and not make too many enemies uh, in a process. Sure. Um, and also it's uh, one of the more expensive events um, I think oh. anarchists uh, put up, uh, not to mention that... Uh, it requires a, a rather large venue. Yeah. Uh, uh, in its heyday, I don't think if we reach this level yet with uh, the new collective, but if in, in its heyday, Anarchist Book Fair uh, was attended by thousands of people. It really requires quite a lot of um, uh, effort to find someone who would want to host this, um, this kind of event. Wow. We've been very lucky uh, and, and I mean to be honest really flattered as well but uh, we got uh, one of the uh, more, more historic uh, progressive venues uh, uh, in 2021 and 2022 which is was uh, Conway Hall and then uh, Bishopsgate Institute um, together with uh, Toynbee Hall 
Whitechapel Gallery and Freedom Press. This was a, we basically ran it across the, this uh, four venues. Um, but yes, it's always the, basically, if you want to organize a book first, start with finding a venue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. After well, the yeah. admin. <laughs> a lot of admin, yeah. <laughs> really absolutely ridiculous amounts of admin yes <laughs> yeah yeah well big respect to you for achieving achieving this um yeah really um okay um so which is your most favorite recent meaning within the last few years publication from freedom press and can you give a brief description of this publication um so uh, there are a few I uh, obviously I read all the books we uh, we publish. Okay, um, that's good. I'm not particularly keen on uh, uh, anarchist writing as uh, it's uh, normally understood, uh, which is uh, 19th century bearded men right. write <laughs> books. Um, but I mean, I I I obviously I I, I read them too. But I, it's just uh, I think we need uh, uh, more contemporarily uh, view mm. on anarchism, and we need to you know answer more contemporary pro uh, problems. Mm. Um, from the the last last few years, my favorite book is I mean to be honest, it's one of my uh, favorite books on anarchism in general, not only from okay. uh, from, from uh, press. It's uh, it's called Anarchism is Movement. Uh, by Thomas Ivanes, and um, this title is basically a very good uh, description of uh, of this book. I really like uh, the author approach to uh, the author approach to anarchism as uh, something which uh, is uh, is changing and adapting, and uh, can always be uh, flexible to uh, basically involve uh, everyone, and uh, uh, should be open to new ideas. Uh, yeah, this is definitely my type of uh, anarchism. Um, okay. I also really like the very unusual book we uh, we published uh, for for Freedom Press um, called A Normal Life by Greeks uh, uh, Greece uh, famous uh, fugitive uh, Vasilis uh, Paliakostas, uh, who is a famous uh, bank robber who escaped from uh, jail, I believe, in two thousand and nine, uh, by the means of uh, hijacking a helicopter and. Um, He's still alive, but uh, as far as we know, but uh, the Greek state cannot find him. Uh, right. This is more, uh, uh, um, I would say, action book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the guy is also not anarchist. He's a, he's definitely anarchist friendly, but um, he's he's a bit of a folk hero in uh, in Greece. Okay, uh, interesting. He spent a lot of time in with anarchists in jail, specifically. <laughs> but, oh, I uh, see. That's interesting. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> But I don't think he will describe himself as uh, uh, as one. Sure. Uh, anyway, we are honored to publish this book, and uh, um, you know, uh, basically there are three uh, incidents invol involving jail breaking in first forty p uh, pages of this book, and uh, yeah. this is <laughs> <laughs> sounds exciting. Yeah, I might, I might give it a try. Okay, 